Good morning, folks. I didn't even plan on doing a live stream today, but thank you to Slim Tito. Uh, I think Slim Tito is part of the Salty Army, Benny Johnson. We conservatives stick together, and had it not been for Slim Tito, I wouldn't have known about this. So some of you may, some of you may not know about Jeffrey Marsh. So Jeffrey Marsh is a TikTok influencer. I'm trying to find out who tagged me in this. Yes, Slim Tito did it. You're awesome. He is Tito Monroe 02. Uh, L -L -L -G, I'm sorry, LGB FJB 100 on Twitter. Thank you, my friend. So some of you may or may not know who the TikTok influencer Jeffrey Marsh is. Now, nobody had a problem with Jeffrey Marsh being non-binary. Nobody had a problem with Jeffrey Marsh talking about his experiences or whatever have you, whatever he was doing on the internet before he did what he did. Now, what did he do? Well, he was on TikTok. First of all, claims to be a life coach. However, doesn't hold any sort of certifications. He has not gotten a license or anything to treat people or give them therapy or anything like that. So he is an unlicensed medical therapist slash life coach who doesn't even have a certification. So he goes on to on TikTok and he's talking about how to go no contact with your parents how parents, you screwed up, you know, and then he does something that required the attention of one TikToker, a Muslim woman named Shema Ranessa. So he puts a video out telling kids, hi kids, the video started out with, come to my Patreon. Well, before Shemaran Nessa puts this person on blast, the Patreon was all ages. On said Patreon is a bunch of encounters with Jeffrey's boyfriend. And I'm not talking like they're going to get ice cream. No, 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 no. There's stuff on there that are it's so graphic, I can't even show it here on YouTube. And you're inviting kids to come to his Patreon and says, we can have a private conversation there. You should go no contact with your parents. This is how you do it. They don't understand you. I do. So he was labeled as a groomer. Now, I have the video of Overload Comedy. It's the, uh, the real Overload Comedy, I'm sorry, on TikTok. Now, you don't even want to know the backlash that she got from this. She was doxxed. She was harassed. Her stuff was destroyed, like they damaged her car. They also cyber-stalked and harassed her and her children over her, her calling out Jeffrey Marsh. So I, I found this clip on... Oh, where was it? Uh, Newsweek, actually, that I'm going to share the video with you. All she did was stop targeting kids. That is the only time people had a problem with Jeffrey. But Jeffrey acts like the victim. OK, and he tries to psychoanalyze everything and, and flip it over on onto onto the people that are questioning him. It's like Corinne Jean-Pierre, when you ask her a question, well, let me refer you to or better yet, deflects it onto somebody else. And that is exactly what he did to me. We'll get into the video that he responded to me after you see this, because he was going to come out trying to smell like a rose, trying to act like the victim. And that's not the case. Again, let me reiterate and say that nobody had a problem with Jeffrey Marsh until he started to target kids and tell them to come to his Patreon so they can have private conversations. Okay. Let's just keep it 100. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, this, this story was so horrible. Good morning, Pork Chop. Good morning, Glamma. Good morning, Living Dead Girl. Donald Hop, what's up? Cat Warlord, hello. I just want to say hello to everybody. Jeffrey, if you're thinking if you if 
I think you're a weirdo. I really do. And APP people need to protect their kids from you. You know, that is your right. And in this day and age, you cannot say, I don't want you talking to kids because automatically, if you say, leave kids alone, boom, you're a transphobe, boom, you're a homophobe, boom, you're a bigot. And it's over here going, look, we are about protecting kids. Call me whatever you want to. I don't give a fly in Philadelphia. If you see K, rah, rah, rah. All right. Here's the video I want to show you guys, and then we'll get into the video where he responds to me. And what he does will absolutely blow your ever-loving minds, because it blew my mind. I was over here going, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, a, a an innocent person would have owned their mistake and been like, you know what, man, I, I fucked up, and I'm wrong, and I won't do that again. Please, guys, like, I'm sorry. Did that ever come out of Jeffrey Marsh's mouth? Never once has it came out of his mouth. He knew damn well what he was doing. So I have a video with Michael, uh, with Michael Knowles, and I have this video here with the overload coming. Then we will watch what he said to me. And I'm over here going, damn it, he could have used a video of me that didn't have like the TikTok filter on, the one that I use when I don't feel like doing my hair and my makeup. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. I, I don't know. It's just, I felt some type of way about it, but it's okay. At least I got your attention though. He looks shit scared too, by the way. He does. He looks very scared. Okay. Here's the controversy explained. And here's why I got involved is because of the attack that Shema Ronessa had, in, uh, had occurred under the uh, Jeffrey Marsh squad cult, call him whatever you will. Sorry, you guys. I didn't know my banner was there. I'll replay this. It's only 15 seconds. So here's who was attacked right here. She's a Muslim woman. Okay, and what that video, I will not play Howard Stern. Sorry, you guys. I won't do that to you guys. What that video did not say is how Shemaron stitched a video. And what it was, was how he was talking about, hi, kids, your parents screwed up. And she was like, no, he didn't. And he was talking about, please come to my Patreon and we can have private conversations. He alluded to the fact to get kids off of his very public TikTok account to go to his very private, all ages at that time, Patreon, where you could directly message. And he even came out and said, let's direct, we can directly message with one another. You can go no contact with your family because they don't understand you quite like I do. I'll be your family is what he said. And so this sent the people in the, you know, in the normal thinking world into overdrive. Like, what are you, what are you doing? We, again, never had a problem with Jeffrey Marsh until he did that and started slamming us parents, telling us parents how we screwed up. You don't tell a parent how to parent their children. And you definitely don't tell a parent that you can love their child better than they can. And this Newsweek, just spun that all around. You see how the media is, right? Spun it all around and declared Shemaranessa the aggressor. Wait a second. All she did was saying, leave kids alone. That's it. She didn't call him any slurs or any harmful tropes, nothing of the sort. All she did was say, maybe you should leave kids alone. That's it. And through that, it's sparked like this massive internet beef 
and his fans literally attacked her, destroyed her car, like literally destroyed her car, put, they, they ripped the molding off her car. She had to put cameras up. They sent harmful emails to her death threats. They sent her a plethora of death threats. Then they mailed her with her daughter's school schedule of when she leaves to take her children to school. Apparently they're different ages and they go to different schools. So they email her and say, we know exactly what time you, you leave at this time to take this daughter to school. You leave that time to take that daughter to school. Then they went above and beyond. A Muslim woman wears a hijab. That is to protect her hair from the people that are not her husband from seeing that. They went as far as, now tell me this ain't a cult, right? They went as far as finding a picture before she converted into Islam. And she they posted a picture of her without her hijab on. And she it was very upsetting to her. So just by saying leave kids alone, okay, and calling Jeffrey out and saying this is what's wrong with this video. This is what it's being perceived as by us parents, right? As a parent, you are a worry wart about your child. You worry about everything. Anything that's a, a molehill, you'll make it a mountain out of because you have unrealistic fears that they're going to get hurt. We spend our entire lives as parents protecting our children. And I'll be damned if we're going to have somebody on the internet who is absolutely confused and pretends to be caring and nurturing. And then you're leading children to see your Patreon that has very explicit imagery on there and discussions about posi sex positions. I'll, and it doesn't matter if it's gay sex or, het or, or heterosexual sex, you're talking about sex on your Patreon and you're inviting children to see that and talking all about his boyfriend. And, and it's very, it was very graphic in nature. You can't, Look, man, you cannot have that type of content and invite children to it. It's wrong. It is wrong. It is. It should always be marked not suitable for work. Okay. It should be also noted as 18 and up after. And this is why it was so bad because after Shema Renessa called out Jeffrey Marsh, what did he do? Then he made his Patreon 18 and up. Okay, you didn't know? You didn't know it was 18 and up? How about if you weren't asking kids to come to see that and telling them to go no contact with their parents, why wouldn't you have that marked 18 and up from get? Oh, okay. So what he did next, he sees all of these people attacking her on TikTok. He put he puts out an anonymous uh, an um an ominous video of him in a office chair saying nothing, looking evil. And he goes, he spins around and he looks in the camera and he says, what do taxidermists do? They stuff, meaning if this is a get stuffed, meaning get effed. That is what a lot of uh, people in the LGBTQ plus community use. Um, she was called a turf. She was called a homophobe. She was called all of these ter these horrific slurs. She never once used any slurs. Nobody used any slurs or harmful tropes against Jeffrey Marsh, myself included. All I said was he's a predator, which I meant from the bottom of my heart. Look, uh, people, I don't care if you are or if you are trans, if you're gay. I don't care. I don't care who you want to sleep with. That's your business. It's not mine. It doesn't make me lose any sleep at night, nor does it make me live my life any differently. Who you love, okay? That's not my business. It becomes my business when you and your cult are attacking a woman just for calling you out for your fuck up. All you had to do was say, I fucked up. I fucked up. There's no accountability whatsoever. And then you deflect that onto somebody else. That That is so damaging. And it's so toxic. And people act like, oh, it's okay since I'm Jeffrey's fan. I'm going to back him up. But if I, I, I have to emphasize this. If push come to shove, 
okay, if you were the one that damaged her car, if you were the one that were sending her death threats uh, on TikTok via email, if you were the one that was cyber stalking her, when you go to jail, is he going to bail you out? Oh, he's not? Oh, oh, right, because he doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. And if he cared about anybody but himself, then he would come on the internet and apologize for what he did. Look, you cannot tell these children who are already on TikTok nine to 10 hours a day that you're not influencing them. If they're watching your content, you have a responsibility. My content is for adults. I clearly mark that on every video of mine, not for kids. Every one that I have ever posted on my YouTube channel, which there's over 2,000 of them, including shorts, every one of them says not for kids. You have a duty, right? The problem that in today's society is that we as parents, we allow our children to be on TikTok, on Instagram, on Snapchat. And guess what? There are predators on those apps. You shouldn't let your, ch your children on the internet unless you are directly supervising them. There are apps. There's a watchdog app that I am all about. You know, I think that there's plenty of them for you guys to choose from. All you have to do is research them and you can find which one suits your budget. You can find which one suits your needs or wants, and you can monitor your children's online activity. In a digital day and age, guess what, you guys? Predators have to not work nearly as hard as they used to in the 80s when it happened to me. Now, I am such a proponent of this because this did happen to me. I was assaulted. I was victimized by an adult when I was a five-year-old child. I was shown pornography at a five-year-old girl. Okay, do you know what that does to people? People don't realize this. For the proponents out there who are pro showing children pornography in schools, like these books that you guys, oh, the book ban. Oh, do you understand what it does to the psyche of a child when you're showing them? That lasts with them for a lifetime. They don't forget that kind of imagery and that kind of, uh, that it's very explicit content. They don't forget that. That stays with them the rest of their life. There's been studies on this. This is psychological. It's, it's known. It is known that it is psychologically damaging on a child, especially you have somebody that's a TikTok influencer telling his, his uh, audience, which is mostly poor, misguided, these trans kids that look up to Jeffrey. You're telling them, you're telling these people, these kids that you know better than their parents do. I get it. Some parents may be more closed-minded than others, but you do not love a child more than their parents do. And to say that us parents screwed up, well, the same could be said for yours too, Jeffrey, because clearly you don't know if whether you're a man or a woman, and that varies from day to day. All right. I have this video here. Michael Knowles. Now we got a leftist perspective of it. We're going to get down to the Michael Knowles perspective. We're going to get down to the conservative perspective. And then we're going to watch exactly what he said to me. And what he said, you guys, is mind blowing. I sat back like, oh my God. As somebody who is easily able to accept accountability. And when I F up, I promptly admit it. To see somebody do what he did. I'm over here wishing that more people out there would accept accountability and responsibility for their actions. We can have a, a lot better place. We can move on from it. But he refuses. He refuses. He'll tell you to go get stuffed instead. And I think it's very toxic that he's on a platform such as TikTok, right, that won't ban him for grooming kids. There are so many signs on his TikTok. It's not even funny. Now, please, you guys, I'm going to say this once and once only. If you go check out his TikTok, do not leave any negative comments. Please don't. I don't care if you see something that you don't like. I don't care. Be the better person. Be the better person. Be diplomatic. Do not send him any hate. We don't do that here. We are not a cult like his followers are that literally sent death threats to a Muslim woman and cyber stalked her and bullied her. And she apologized and they still bullied her. It was very sad. It was very, very sad. All right. Here's this video here. I want to show you a perspective of Michael Knowles. Most people are angry, like Jeffrey Marsh. Jeffrey Marsh, who is this 
super like the creepiest guy you ever saw out of the weirdest horror movie ever <laughs> promoter of transgenderism he like cast out of central casting to be the uber villain of transgenderism jeffrey marsh is angry with his critics okay really quickly before we get into well apparently i'm a critic no, I'm just a mother who gives a shit about her her kids and other people's kids. In a day and age where we're letting our children be parented by the internet, like I feel like I have to pick up the slack for a lot of people, but I am very outspoken when it comes to being very direct, loving, compassionate, but stern. Kids need discipline. They thrive when they have discipline and structure. So this is Jeffrey talking about Jeffrey's critics. Now, if you have a critic, then you can either take it as constructive criticism or you can let it bruise your ego a little bit. If you don't know this face yet, Jeffrey and Dylan Mulvaney are like this. So you're saying they're trans activists, but they're they've done no surgeries. They've had no hormones. They've not transitioned at all, but how are they trans activists? They're more like trans allies, but they are both pro-transing children. Okay. I just had to sneak that one in there just for shits and gigs. Okay. It's okay to be angry. Anger is often your body, your mind, your soul's way of telling you that you are worth something that other people are worth something, that justice counts for something. So no, don't be afraid. Don't be, um, don't be afraid to show your anger. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin. Okay, you know, I, I, a lot of people talk about him being like Buffalo bill because he doesn't he wants you to affirm his they them pronouns right so we'll we'll entertain that we'll call you they even though you're only one person and we have to change the whole english language because you need that constant affirmation that we all don't fine if it makes you offended if i call you he then i don't i guess i'll 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 baby you since you're a grown-ass male you're grown you're an adult you know Donald Trump, he tried to ban TikTok. India did it, and people in India, they live by something called morals and values, okay? They saw how immoral, how toxic TikTok was, and they banned it. I, even though I'm on there, I have like 70,000 uh, followers on there right now. I would be okay with that. I really would, because it is the most toxic leftist just it's a soundboard of people that sound off. I just was admitted. Somebody said they didn't like me because you want to know why they don't know me as a human being. They've never met me in real life because I like Donald Trump. So they hate my guts. That's real. I'm all for the TikTok ban. I wish he would have honest to God. I do. Cause I could live without TikTok. I don't give a shit. What is it going to kill me if I don't have it? Oh, well. All right. Let's go with Michael. Michael's making a, a good impression of it puts the lotion on its skin again or it gets the hose again. Or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> Speaking of transgender representation in, in cinema and popular culture. Hi, Stuart. What, what of his point? His point is anger is really good. You should be angry. Use that anger. Channel that anger. Libs say this all the time. Channel that anger. Take that. You don't usually hear a conservative say this. Because anger, 999 times out of 1,000, is going to lead you in the wrong direction. Drew has this line. He says, anger is the devil's cocaine. <laughs> Hold on. I have, to, I have to bring up. You have to make a very great point, Sandy. And I'm not here to be argumentative with you at all because, you know, you're right. But here's why I use it, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again because you might have missed it. 
I use it because it generates free captions for me and it's extremely easy for me to make a video and hit a button and then it generates captions for me and then I upload it to my YouTube channel. It's kind of like I feel lazy and I don't want to edit and sit there for hours that I don't have. But you're right. If I don't if I'm for banning it, why do I use it? Well, that's why. That's exactly why. I'm a lazy bitch. At least I can own that shit, but I would not be sad if it was banned today or tomorrow. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. I won't cry. Most people do. Oh, all of my followers. Ah! People treat followers and subscribers as just that. They neglect to realize that those are real human beings that literally hit that button. And real life actually matters a lot more than a social media presence. I just had to put that in there. But I appreciate your comment. I think you're right, but I'm not going to because it's, again, I like the quick captions. I really do. <laughs> I'm not saying there is no place for righteous anger. There is far a far greater place for righteousness broadly. Uh, uh, yes, there can be a case for righteous <laughs> anger, but most of the time that you are getting angry, you are falling into a temptation and you're falling into the sin of wrath and it's going to lead you astray and you're going to feel justified in doing it because your enemies mm. might really be as bad as you think they are. Mm, and the way one. that they persecute you might really be as bad as you think it is. But you are called to patience. You are called not to indulge yeah, in wrath. That's sad, man. That it's it's like when you punish a child. <laughs> yeah. If you want to punish your oh. child or spank your child or anything like that. What do they always tell you? I'm such a softy with my kids. I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get tougher before I totally spoil my kids. But what do the people, what do the the educators always tell you? What are the the what does your grandma always tell you? Well, you don't don't punish a child when you're angry. Yes. Wait until you've calmed down. If, if you're yeah. dealing with a rogue employee, like I'm dealing with Mr. Davies all the time, you know, gallivanting around, carousing, doing all sorts of nonsense. When I'm going to, you know, bring down the hammer, you don't do it when you're angry. You, do, you because you're, you're going to lose your, your rational faculties. You're going to lose control. Yeah. For how many decades yeah. now have we heard, we need to end colonialism in Africa. My mom gave this. We speech. need to end neo-colonialism in Africa. We, colonialism was the worst thing that ever happened, and we need to let the African nations govern themselves. Yeah, I agree with letting the African nations govern themselves, especially Uganda. If they have their own rules, that's theirs. That's their rules. It doesn't affect us. Do we live there? No, we don't. So I don't understand why anybody would want to stick their nose in the business of other countries as much as this administration does. Miss, they sent the borders are the smartest woman Joe Biden knows. They sent her down to you uh, out to Uganda. Like you better, you better get rid of these anti-gay laws. What are you doing? You know what the president of Uganda told her? She said, get out of my country. <laughs> it's none of our business. It's none of our business. Hey, guys, knock it off now, or I shall come up there. See, Michael's right. Don't discipline when you're angry. That's a very good fact. Okay. So we've started doing that now. We're letting the African nations govern themselves. Are the liberals happy about that? I don't think so. There's a headline here from The Guardian. Ugandan MPs pass bill imposing death penalty for homosexuality. Yes, I do. I own that shit. I own it. That's African countries governing themselves. <laughs> do you? And it's kind of funny that it's the liberals who are the ones who say this is outrageous. America is so terrible. Stop spreading your evil ideas. Please, Ugandans, live as you like. Very good. We are going to kill all of the homosexuals. Uh, but not like that. <laughs> um, did you what? So it's like that wonderful video from the from the African newscast. You are gay. Why are you gay? The liberals don't. They can't understand that because in their view, every single culture is liberal and liberal in a 2023 kind of liberal way. Every all the cultures are just the same. The only difference is some people have more money and some people have less money. And some people get a little more sunshine, some people get a little more fog, but you know, we all basically agree on everything. That's not true. So the liberals, paradoxically, are the most inclined to impose their values on the world, but one of those values is not imposing your values on the world. So how does one make sense of that? The way Here, look, how do we make sense of a liberal 
they push their views onto everybody else, including children. Like nobody is safe. The more the merrier. And if you're not all in, you are against. That is it. There is no black or white. There's it's it's or I mean it is black and white. There's no gray. There's no in between. You're either all in or you are a traitor. I've been called that too. <laughs> I'm over here going, okay. Okay, so they're all they're all about indoctrination, right? And if you don't roll with them, they are but you're so judgmental. They're so judgmental. If you are not again with them, you are against them. And they literally accuse the churches of doing the same thing. Oh, wow, bad you send your children to church. Um, because I want my kid to know good morals and values and have faith. That faith, that faith is 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 real and faith exists. It's it's so hypocritical again. I'm over here just like, I don't care. Do what you want to do. Think however you want to think. Dress however you want to dress. But the very second that you impose your opinions onto me and then you get very angry and very unhinged, that is where you lose me. You are telling me how I have to think. You're telling me how I have to act. You're telling me what is acceptable according to you. Okay, that doesn't work with me. I'm sorry. The way they're going to make sense of that is they're probably going to go in and reimpose their values. No, he don't take any now, hormones. For, as far as I'm concerned, surgeries, <laughs> the death no penalty hormones. is a little, little harsh. All right, I'm all for standards and sort I, of maintaining certain behaviors in the public square, but death penalty seems a little strong. But but if Uganda is going to have self determination, this is what they're going to do, and. There are certain areas where African nations are doing this, where I think a, a lot of American conservatives would say, hey, African nations, can you come run for the legislature over here? No. The libs are constantly trying to push abortion on Africa. Africa says we don't want abortion. The, the libs are constantly trying to push contraception on Africa. The Africans are saying we don't want contraception. Why don't we just leave them alone? I don't get it. I really don't. Now, here's my personal take on it, because I have a plethora of, of friends who are same-sex couples or gay. They're gay. Oh, they're gay. Oh, my God. Yeah. A conservative. Well, my gay friends are conservative, but I know you guys might not see eye to eye with them, and that's okay. You can have your own thoughts and morals and beliefs. I, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. I judge people based off of how they treat me and the content of their character instead of their sexual orientation, their skin color, you know, the shit that doesn't fucking matter to me. Now, oh, I feel, I mean, if it's Uganda, that's your own business. I don't live there. I never have. I've never even visited. I don't even know anybody from Uganda. So I, my, my opinion is nothing. Like I, I literally have no say in the matter and I don't have any opinions on it. I don't. I, if it was here and they were like, we're just going to kill you because you're gay. Yeah, then I would be like, yo, dude, that's a little bit of um, no, we're not gonna do that. You know, because I know a plenty of plenty of good gay people who are amazing. I know and and I'm just saying gay. I'm saying men, women, you know, because I don't do this whole alphabet mafia thing, and a lot of my friends in that community who have that sexual orientation, they don't either. They don't want nothing to do with the LGBTQIA plus community because they know how violent and volatile and vile that they are. Like, I was just talking to my friend Rocky from Gays Against Groomers, okay? I, am, I have a lot of friends in that organization, and they are good people. They are such fighters for children, okay? They are. what they're. It's in their name. It's in their namesake right there. Now I was just talking with, with Rocky. We'll get into that. Let me just talk to, about this, but this about drag shows. Okay. That's what we'll talk about after this. We don't, we don't want that imposition. That's the imposition of your culture, Westerners. Yeah. Yeah. You think the imposition of your culture is, I don't know, capitalism Thanks, Brandon. and racism and this is, no, every country on earth is extremely racist other than the West. Okay, that's you're not exporting racism or anything like that. What you're exporting is the LGBT flag and condoms and abortion and all the trappings of liberalism. That's the new kind of colonialism. When the libs protest colonialism, you better bring those protest signs and take a look in the mirror. Speaking of cultural differences, a Michigan college 
has just announced a number of new graduation ceremonies. This is Grand Valley State University. The Multicultural Affairs Office over at Grand Valley State has now announced there will be graduation ceremonies or celebrations nice. for black students. There's the black graduation, Asian students, Thank you, Latinx Michael. students. Talk about colonialism and <laughs> cultural uh, what the hell is o- overriding of, of norms and tradition. Latinx students. What are Latinx? Native American students. LGBTQIA plus students. There's one group of students I can't, there's actually a couple that I can't quite find on this list. I guarantee you they're white. <laughs> white and heterosexual. What the hell? You you know, look, we don't take our kids to strip clubs. We don't hand them hustler magazines and penthouse magazines. We don't pop a porn on for them. Why? Because it's wrong. It is wrong. That is a tool that groomers use. That is a tool that predators use to gain trust and to open the children's minds to say, see this? It's on the TV. If it's on the TV, it's normal, right? It's a tool that they use. It's a weapon in their arsenal. Okay, I know. I was shown a porn movie when I was five years old. And then shortly thereafter, guess what happened to me? Something that has lived with me for a very long time. And when you when I played this video by Jeffrey Barsh of what he says about me, you know, there has been a lot of pain in my life, but I'm also hip to the fact of what people like him do. And that is why he still won't just own up. He has to deflect and project and look at her. Don't look at me. You'll see. Wait till I play this video, you guys. Where is the... Where's the white student graduation? Uh, the uh, Multicultural Affairs Office has said that won't exist. And there's no, where's the, I don't know, the Christian or let's say just broadly religious There is none. student no, must, graduation, maybe to counter the Muslim, more novel no, nothing. Uh, sexual revolution graduation. No, none of that's there. And because they're the, anti-God. The response of many conservatives is this is not going to go on forever. At a, at a certain point, white people are going to get extremely angry about this, and they're going to push back and say, "No, you can't just you can't make us second class citizens. We're not going to tolerate that." But I'm not. I'm actually not totally convinced. I think the libs probably will get away with it at least for a very long time, and they'll do that because white people don't have a racial consciousness. And it's one of the delightful things about white people is we just don't think about race that much. We think that race is a relatively unimportant <laughs> aspect of our identity. We think about religion a lot. We think about culture a lot. We think about nation. We think about affinity to different, I don't know, hobbies and vocations. We don't, race is really, really low on the list. Well, you know why it's low on the list for people like, like us, for Caucasians. Let's just say Caucasians in general. Well, number one, I myself, I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't control this, nor did I have a say-so. I didn't write this down as a goal and then poof, it happened. I can't take credit for this. I did nothing in order to achieve the melanin or lack thereof in my skin. It's insufficient. It doesn't matter. It doesn't define the content of my character. Now, some people want to call me hateful and I'm such a, an evil person because I like Donald Trump. They also say I'm going to do damage onto the trans community by saying leave kids alone. And kids are not old enough to consent to puberty blockers. Did I say anything about adults? Did, did I ever? No, 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 I never have. I said, if this is what makes you happy and if you are 100% sure, because once you cross that threshold, you ain't coming back, baby. That's it. Once you turn that P to a V, you can't turn it back to a P again. That's it. Done. So please make sure that you know what you're doing and don't go to a quack. Go to the best doctor you're going to have so you don't have complications like everybody else. They deem me as being evil. It has nothing to do with my skin color. It has something to do with common sense in my brain. But a patriot, look, you are the enemy of the liberal if you are Caucasian. 
if you are conservative. Boy, oh boy, are you really the enemy if you are a Christian? It's sad. It really is. Race doesn't fucking matter to me. I don't care what you look like. Are you a dick or are you not? Are you not a dick? Cool. We could probably get along really well. If you're a dick, I don't care what color skin you have. I'm going to say you're a dick. It's a universal thing. Yeah. Okay. Back to the movie. Back to the movie. <laughs> but for every other racial group in the world, it's much higher. Ah. According to Pew, white racial consciousness is 15%. For Asians, mm -hmm. Hispanics, and Blacks, it's over 50% for all of them. And for Black people, it's over 70%. So as long as that persists, then you're going to get you're going to get more of these <laughs> sorts of graduation ceremonies and PTA meetings. So there is there is a kind of subtle, there is a, a subtly colonial or racist undertone to this whole thing, which is oh, there's the Latino graduation, there's the gay graduation, there's the black graduation, but the main graduation that's the white graduation. <laughs> <laughs> there is it's I don't think the libs are totally hey, conscious of it. But it's it's the 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 same accident of their uh, invectives against colonialism and racism that you see in their affairs in Africa. Today's fake headline Friday. I've got more mailbag questions to get to. <laughs> ben, we will get to that. You're gonna be you waiting a long time. Pick the correct or the the fake headline rather out of the five that Mr. Davies is trying to stump me on. The only way to do yes. it is to become a member of the Crème de la Crème. Not you, hoi polloi. Okay, this is the Daily Wire. He's plugging himself, which, okay, that's fine. You can plug yourself. Michael Knowles, I do subscribe to the Daily Wire Plus because they give me good conservative news. They give me not liberal ran leftist propaganda that only pushes leftist rhetoric. I don't want to hear that. I don't. It makes no sense to me. It doesn't compute in my brain when you're saying, let's blame the guns and not the people behind the guns. Um, Does the gun buy? You can't even get bullets with the gun. You have to buy the bullets with, separately. Then it takes the human being to put said bullet in the gun. And then it takes said human to cock the hammer. I don't know how you guys do it. It also takes a human being that have major mental issues to go into a school and pull the trigger. Okay. I'm so disgusted how people can't take accountability and put the responsibility onto the people. Because the last time I checked, guns, they don't have arms. They don't have thumbs. They don't have legs. And they certainly can't load themselves and then pick a target and pull the trigger. It's always the human beings. That is how they think. It's uh, I'm over here going, you're, you are the side of the, hip, the hypocrite. You are the side that literally will sit here and justify everything but accountability. It's everybody else's fault. You're deflecting. And that's not cool. We in America do not have, we might have an illegal gun problem because as so is Chicago, who has the strictest gun laws in the country that have the most gun violence. We might have a people problem. We might have an illegal gun problem. I think we do because I don't see any sound minded second amendment loving patriots going into a school and killing a bunch of children. I see the mentally disturbed people do that. Oh, every one of them. Cause you can't be of sound mind and think that these little innocent, sweet babies, somebody's little angel is a target. I don't understand why you're going to blame the gun. Why? Why? Why in Canada, literally, when Uvalde happened, Justin Trudeau banned all handguns. Dude, there's moose. You guys have moose. You guys have big ass grizzly bears. Do you, what, you don't want your citizens? What if somebody breaks into their home with a gun? You don't want them armed to protect themselves? Come on. It's the legal gun owners who are not to blame, but they're the ones that get the blame. You see what I'm getting at here? I can't roll with a side that is anti-death penalty, but pro-killing innocent babies. I can't do it. I'm sorry. 
and some of you might not know this, but some of you might, I was forced myself to end a pregnancy and it is, it has literally been with me and traumatized me for the last 25 years. I can't do that again. I can't tell you what it's like to walk into a clinic in the hood because we don't have no abortion clinics in the suburbs. If you ever noticed that to walk in to a clinic, walking past protesters with very graphic signs, right? Of body parts and all kinds of shit. I was traumatized going in there, but even more traumatized in that lobby when I'm sitting there and these girls are all around me hooting it up like it's just another day at Denny's. And I'm over here shook. Like, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm about to do this. I was told either you do it or you're on your own. And you know what I should have said? Fuck it. I'll be on my own then. But I was a stupid 19-year-old kid. I was stupid. And I wish I would have never done that. I, I, live, I live with that every day of my fucking life. It has traumatized me. And what else has traumatized me? Yes, I, yes, it has. Me being shown a porn movie at five years old. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the sights. I'll never forget what I saw. I'll never forget the pubes. I'll never forget everything that I saw. And it was just, oh, look at this. It's just normal. And shortly thereafter, I was abused in the most horrific way. So yeah, I'm pro-life. I am pro-protecting children because of what I've been through. I am a warrior for children. I am a warrior for life. And I will not tolerate any grown adult targeting kids. That's wrong. I have to see a school board meeting here in about, when is it? I guess October is the next one. Because I just missed the last one. Again, in Ohio, we voted on parental rights and education once already. It passed overwhelmingly. But they're still trying to pass these issues where, are you sure you don't want our your children to read pornography in schools? Are you sure? Like, come on. Are you sure? We were sure then, and we sure as hell are sure now. So I'll be barking loudly at my next school board meeting. I will body, I will tape that. I will put it on, I will wear a body camera, and I'll get my three minutes to speak. How absolutely dreadful and absolutely damaging it is on a child's psychiatry on their psyche and to push prop push any any sort of explicit materials onto kids when we're adults don't we get enough of that like when we're children we shouldn't worry about adult stuff at all right in a world today where they're glamorizing teen pregnancy teen mom you have girls literally set out to get pregnant just so they can make it on MTV and become famous because going viral, going and getting famous today means everything to these kids because social media is raising kids, not parents. you got to stay firm. And if look, if you believe in your heart of hearts that somebody is guilty of trying to pander to children, you got every damn right to say something. And don't you let them bully you. Don't you let them harass you. You know what? That woman, Shamara Nessa, she lives in the UK. She was terrorized. They terrorized her and he laughed. You know why he laughed? Because he didn't have to do it. His minions did. All right. I got the video. I got it. And I'm going to show it to you guys right now. First, uh, I wanted to, where is it? Where is it? Did I shut it out? Did I close it out? I did. No, I didn't. Here it is. I got to put it on this screen here. Of course, Rolling Stone backs him up and Rolling Stone acts like this, this, this guy's okay, man. He's, he's, he's cool, man. He's cool. Uh, so I literally tagged every one of my gay friends, my trans friends. The ones that are conservative, the ones that are Trump supporters. Yeah, we have, look, y'all, I highly recommend if you are one of those judgmental Christians, please, like, just take a step back. If they're not targeting kids and if they are warriors for kids, okay, please, like, let that judgmental stuff leave, leave it up to God, okay? Leave it up to God. Only God can judge us, right? 
It's not up to us to judge anybody else seriously. But if you're fucking with kids, we got every right to come at you and we are going to headstrong like a, like a damn battering ram. Let me get rid of this comment here. I just, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Seth. I meant to highlight your comment and say, thank you. I respect you, Jen. I can't believe that people actually, uh, people accept accountability for their act. I still can't believe that people, uh, accept accountability. Don't accept accountability for the actions. I stand by you. People need to learn to leave kids alone. And that's it. That's all I've ever said. I never said anything about adults. Except make sure you know what the hell you're doing because you can't go back and and look at the detransitioners and, and the people that are having complications. Look at that before you make a decision that you can't go back from. Because guess what, you guys? Despite contrary belief, right? We have the trans activists out there today saying that it's us that are it's that us, the conservative Christians, are the people who are getting trans people killed. Can you believe that? I'm over here going, well, the statistics say otherwise. Because the, what the statistics say is when they, the trans, whether they be male or female, it's mostly male, by the way, seven to 10 years post-op, okay, meaning after they have that surgery, seven to 10 years post-op is when a transgender person is more most likely to unalive themselves. So again, scapegoat. Let's blame somebody else for our actions. Not, oh my God, I made a huge, a huge mistake. I can't go back from, I see no hope of me turning back to what I was born as. Because this community sees that you could be whatever you want to. X, 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 Y, insufficient. Well, I made a video the other day before I got in the shower. I said, X, 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 Y are insufficient, huh? I says, my XX chromosomes, guess what they guarantee me? That I'll never die of prostate cancer. And that's the damn truth. You X, Y heaven men out there, you will never die from cervical cancer. Never. Because you don't have one. I can't stand how people are so like, soft these days. They need to be coddled. Mm, they need to be coddled oh, and lied to. Lied to. I don't know about you guys, but I have an Italian temper. And if you lie to me, holy shit, balls of fire, I'm going to go nuke on you. I don't like to be lied to. I like to know the truth, even if it hurts. Because the truth, guess what? If you tell the truth to somebody, what happens? What's the worst that's going to happen? What? They hold you accountable? They lose trust in you. Well, if you didn't do them dirty in the first place, then you wouldn't have lost that trust in the first place. All right. <clears throat> My, Ian Miles Cheong. Again, this is on Twitter. And this is what Jeffrey Marsh said to moi. Well, I hope you I hope you know what this face looks like. This real face. That's a filter on there, you guys. Again, I was lazy as fuck. I'm lazy. I didn't want to put makeup on. So I put a filter on. Not going to lie. I'm going to own it. I think I look better without the filter anyways. You guys can be the judge. I know some of you will come in clutch for me. Please come in clutch for me. <laughs> no, you can tell me the truth. I don't care. I don't get easily offended because I don't have thin skin. All right, you guys ready? Okay. I'm going to still say it. Jeffrey Marsh is a predator. Oh, well, you don't like it? Tough. Tell him stop targeting kids then. I, I can hold your pain. You ain't holding shit. I hold my pain and I wear it proudly. I don't hide what happened to me, nor do I ever want to. So you ain't holding shit, Jeffrey. I got this. I've been... Hold on, Jeffrey. Hold on, Jeffrey. Hold on, Jeffrey. Let me switch over here. Hold on. I got this. I've had this for 43, almost 44 years. I don't need you to hold my pain for me. When I said what I said, I said, I still say you're a predator because you're targeting kids. Now, let's see, Jeffrey, if you're watching. Go on a podcast with me. Go on a podcast with me. I want to see if you can hold accountability. Just once. 
if you didn't target kids, do you think I would have even known who you are or gave a shit if you are non-binary, if you are a man that wants to wear makeup, if you want to call yourself Dumbo, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. The only reason why I knew who you were is because of what you did. My pain, I wear it as a badge of honor, sir. Ma'am, they, them. Okay. What I assume, uh, what I project is going on is that you are in a lot of pain and it's very easy to blame me for your pain. And I'm very sorry that you're in pain. Hold on a second here, Jeffrey, because we're going to keep playing this back and forth and we're going to go back and forth here. So I'm blaming you for my pain? No, I'm going to blame the child rapist that did that to me and his teenage son that did that to me and my first son's father who abused me for seven years and my other one too. So I am I know exactly where to put blame onto the people who hurt me, okay? I'm not going to say it was all straight white males either because I don't care. I think a lot of straight white males out there are good people. I'm not putting my, my hurt onto you. I said, I think you're a predator because you targeted kids. Stop targeting kids then. And you're switching this around on me? You're, you're literally deflecting it onto me? L let me find out you don't know how to take accountability. That's what this is. You're going to see this man go round and round and round and blame me. And not once does he say, damn, I fucked up. I'm sorry. Not once. Watch. Watch this. And I wanted to let you know that throughout my life, I have seen a lot of pain. I've been around a lot of pain. I've experienced a lot of I'm pain. I'm sure you have. Not my fault. And uh, I can be a sponge for you. No, thank you. You're not. I can take your pain. I don't mind. I I have my own pain. I You have your own pain. I don't want your pain and you can't have mine. It doesn't work like that. So you're saying that because of the pain I went through, I'm attacking you. No, I called you out because you told children to go to your very sexually explicit Patreon. That is why we were here. That is why I put the video out. And you're also on YouTube Kids telling kids that they could be anything. A boy is not a boy. A girl is not a girl. You're also on YouTube kids doing that. Uh, I'm sorry. If you believe that, Jeffrey, if you believe you're gender fluid, okay, it doesn't affect me in the slightest bit because I love who I am. I own my chromosomes. I'm a woman. I'm a biological woman. And I have no need to have anybody affirm or reaffirm that. I don't care if you do, but you're literally pushing this leftist propaganda onto children. Okay. These gender woke ideologies, you're promoting that on YouTube kids. And then you're telling kids on your TikTok, you, your parents don't understand you like I do. You're telling kids how to go no contact with their parents. Where do you plan on housing these kids? Because guess what? They're still living with their parents. Their parents are still paying for everything. They're still on their parents' health insurance. Their parents are still feeding them. Their parents are the ones still driving them to and from soccer practice, picking them up from school. The parents are the ones that are taking them to the doctors. They don't need nobody on the internet telling a child to go no contact with their parents because, oh, you're not trans enough? Oh, well, let's fix that then your parents must be, they fucked up. That's what you said, Jeffrey. You said that. I want you on a podcast with me. And if you're not, if you have nothing to hide, let's do it. I could be civil with you, but I won't sit here and allow you to project this onto me. And do I feel terrible that if he was victimized? Yes. I don't want to see anybody be victimized. But the very second that you use that as an excuse as to pushing that onto kids and screwing them up. Oh, yeah, we got a problem, homie. We got a big old problem. Because I'll tell you what, never in my life have I wanted to project the pain that I have onto anybody else. But I'll tell you what, if somebody put that pain onto me and they did me dirty, you guarantee they saw the wrath of me. Mm. 
You looked a little nervous there, Jeffy. I'm going to blow this up for everybody to watch again. It's one minute. He looks very uncomfortable. I'm no body language expert, but I would hella love for a body language expert to come on in and, I don't know, analyze him. Because that swallow at the, at the end, you know, I do that sometimes when I'm guilty. I'm, I'm like, gulp, oh shit. But unlike you, I know, I know when I fuck up. And I, admit, I promptly admit it. Promptly. Because guess why? Because I can't learn. And I show people by not owning my fuck-ups that I'm incapable of learning or that I have any remorse whatsoever. Let's watch this again. I want you guys to study his body language here. And I'll be called transphobe. I'll be called homophobe. I'll be called all kinds of stuff for say, I don't care. Call me whatever you want to. I'm none of those things, but go right ahead. If that makes you feel better, go right ahead. I'm going to still say it. Jeffrey Marsh is a predator. Oh, well, you don't like it? Tough. Tell him stop targeting kids then. I... I can hold your pain. What I assume, uh, what I project is going on is that you- You project. That's exactly what you're doing, Jeffrey. You're projecting. Here, I'll back it up again. What I project is going on. What I project, what the, yeah, you're about to project. You just told everybody what you're about to do is project everything onto me. Okay, then how about this? I'll take your pain, Jeffrey. I'll be your scapegoat for what you've done. No, the fuck I won't. I'm not the one that said, children, come join my Patreon. And we can, you can see all this. First of all, my Patreon don't have nothing sexually explicit on there. So there's, I mean. What's going on is that you are in a lot of pain. And it's very easy to blame me for your pain. And I'm very sorry that you're in pain. No, you're not. And I wanted to let you know that throughout my life, I have seen a lot of pain. I've been around a lot of pain. I've experienced a lot of pain. And uh, I can be a sponge for you. Watch the gulp. I can take your pain. Watch. I don't mind. Liar. Watch the gulp. Oh, there's another one calling me I'm going to steal... That's a, there's another one calling me out for what I've done. Jeffrey, we uh, will be 100% okay if you just say I own, I own it, man. I fucked up. I did. I won't do that again. I have now switched since, never once have you came out with a video saying this. I have since switched that to 18 and up. Because by you not coming forward and saying that, hey, I've since switched it because y'all called me out on it. You didn't even say, hey, I didn't even know that it wasn't 18 and up. I didn't even know I had to do that, but you've had Patreon for a very long time. You do. And you also lowered your prices, so you know how that works. You lowered your prices. Again, so you know the ins and out of Patreon. You're not ignorant to what Patreon is. We will be just fine if you take accountability and stop blaming everybody else for what you did. I did not force you to make those videos. I was not there. For you to literally turn this around on me is pathetic. It is disturbing that you would literally project and say you're going to project this onto me. That is sad. It would be like me going to rob a bank and saying, well, I've experienced pain in my life, but it's Jeffrey's fault. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And of course, you're going to use your very, very, very protected community that is protected on all liberal sites like Patreon, TikTok, YouTube. You're going to use that to your advantage. You can't do it on Twitter, though. You can't because you are not protected on there because there's something called free speech there. Now, I'm not for people targeting Jeffrey and saying hurtful, hateful shit to him. I don't, I don't like that. Don't get it twisted. 
I don't like hate at all. I think it's wrong. But what I will not sit here and allow is for Jeffrey Marsh to literally flip that shit around on me. And then you're asking me for sympathy because you were hurt in the past. You being hurt is you don't get to use that excuse of hurt people, hurt people. You literally preyed on the most vulnerable, the most weakest, the most innocent, because you knew damn well it wasn't working with adults. What a shame. What a shame. See, nobody had a problem with you up until this point. Nobody. I could care less who you are. I can care less what you choose to dress up as. I particularly don't like your choice in makeup today because you look like you got it off of the rack at CVS. Looks like some wet and wild ass shit. I mean, I'm no professional makeup artist myself, but you like to dress that way? That's your thing. I don't care. doesn't make or break me. But how dare you have the balls to come on to any sort of media outlet and call me out the way you did? You just, and what sucks is you guys, his cult, like following, will praise him. And you know what that does to a narcissist? That literally is like dumping gasoline on the fire, okay? It inflates their ego even more. Now, when you call them out and say, hey, stop targeting kids, they do shit like this and they project it onto you. They become the victim. Oh, but I've been victimized too. I see your pain, but mine's better. Look, just because... I was victimized as a child does not mean I re I'm going to repeat the cycle. What it does mean is I'm on high alert. I got radar for that shit, okay? And I could only go off of what you were saying. I didn't make this up in my head. There's a plethora of people on TikTok who called you out on it. I've seen transvestite males do it. I've seen gay people do it. I've seen white. I've seen black. I've seen men. I've seen women. But the only one that you and your cult target the most are the weakest, like poor Shemaran Nessa. And then you inadvertently united Christian and Muslim. See? Again, all you got to do is say, I fucked up. That's it. And we can move on from it. Like, I don't wish any ill will on Jeffrey Marsh. I don't. I don't want any hate to go Jeffrey's way. I don't. I really don't. I'm probably asking for the impossible here when I say just own it. But they never will. They never will. And that's unfortunate because how can we move on as a society if we're always dodging accountability and putting it on to somebody else? But when you succeed, oh, that's all you, isn't it? Because it's so much easier to blame somebody else for your failures and your fuck-ups than it is to say, that was me, shit, damn it. But we grow as human beings trial by error. We grow by human as human beings by learning from one's mistakes, but we can't pussyfoot our way through life and bullshit other people either. My take on this is please, despite how you feel, be a man about it. Literally. You're literally okay with your entire fan base attacking a woman putting her out there without her hijab on, doxing her, sending her death threats. You're literally okay with them cyber stalking her and stalking her and knowing where her children go to school. That is because that is a toxic fan base. When you don't call out, he didn't even call out his fan base and say, guys, that was fucked up. Don't do that like I'm doing right now. Because he doesn't care. 
The only person that Jeffrey Marsh cares about is Jeffrey Marsh. And it's unfortunate, maybe because of the pain that he's endured, that that's why he is very um, selfish. But again, there goes me making excuses. Own it. If Again, if I were to rob a bank, guess what? I did it. I'm guilty. No use disputing it. That's my DNA. That's my fingerprints. That's me on camera. I'm guilty. But again, when I went to prison, that's what I did. I didn't snitch. I did my time. Maybe I'm more manly than him. I don't know. It's nothing about being a man or a woman. It's about being a stellar stand-up human being. I think... I don't think bullying him is right. I don't think two wrongs make it right. I don't. I really don't. But I will not sit here and let you play the victim and let you act as if I'm your scapegoat. Because you didn't know who I was until somebody sent you that. You didn't know who I was while you were making this video, while you were sniffing Dylan Mulvaney's fingers saying, let's be friends. You didn't know me when you came on making TikTok videos about you being a brand amb ambassador for tampons when you don't need them. Like this, you did this, not me. And if you can't handle the heat, well, I guess they say get out of the kitchen. You put yourself on public display just like I do. I open myself up for criticism and I get it all the time. Trust and believe that. But again, I was born with thicker skin. I can handle it because I know whether people want to leave nasty comments or a positive comment, it's all the same in the algorithm's eyes. I know who I am as a human being. I'm fucking proud of who I am as a human being. I am one hell of a mother. I'm one hell of a member of, of my community. And I'm a, I'm a caring, nurturing person. Well, again, I don't hold back. And nor do I allow people to bullshit and put it on me when you don't even know who the fuck I am. Again, I challenge you. Come on. My email is listed on my about page. You can message me on TikTok. You can message me on Instagram. Hell, you can even message me on Twitter. There's plenty of ways that you can get a hold of me. Also, I have a Patreon, Jeffrey. If you want to join my Patreon, you can. There you can directly message me. There's no adult content on there, though. It's just me, like, hi, behind the scenes type shit. I guarantee you he don't, though. All right, guys, I appreciate you all joining me today. Thank you. If you ever wondered what projection and deflection looks like by a pure narcissist, that was it. Take care of yourselves. Stay vigilant. Make sure you guys are attending school board meetings because we are the devil if we do. We get the knocks from the federal government if we say, please don't show pornography to our children. We're the ones that get doxxed and harassed and cyber stalked and bullied and our cars destroyed when we call people out like this because we are not the protected class. Maybe, just maybe, we have to make up our own part of the alphabet mafia. Therefore, we can be as protected and intrinsic uh, as they are. I'm just saying. Again, with a community that is so soft and can't handle accountability, they sure do bark the loudest, right? They do. They act so oppressed, but you got the most privilege. Yeah, you got the most privilege here as a biological male can compete against biological females in soccer and weightlifting. We got the uh, biological males being able to go into the bathrooms with biological females. Yeah. Yeah. Your community is the most protected. And I don't know why, because you're just as much as a human as I am. And um, I don't need special privileges, but my rights are being taken away by your community. And I don't appreciate that. I don't. And I don't appreciate predators using your community as a means to prey on children, which has happened time and time and time again. 
So, all right, guys, take care of yourselves. Jeffrey, I'm ready. I'll be here. Take care. Bye now. Thank you, guys. Stay blessed. Stay vigilant. And do not be afraid to be called all kinds of leftist trigger words because you're standing up for what's right. I'll be damned if I'm going to have some person, some stranger on the internet tell my child to go no contact with me. Everything I've been through, uh-uh, not happening. Not now, not ever. See you guys. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>